everyone and I hope you're all doing well out there and welcome back to the channel for another 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review and today we're going to be taking a look at XO6's take on William Shatner as Admiral James T. Kirk from the 1979 Robert Wise directed Star Trek the motion picture. Uh, the review will take the usual format, we'll have a quick look at the box, then we'll be diving down to the table for a look at the accessories, then it will be out with the Admiral himself, onto the stand, onto the turntable for a close-up look, and then we'll be wrapping the whole thing up with the uh, usual showcase at the end. Before we get into the box, though, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. Uh, your support has been fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification icon. We have lots more content coming up, which uh, some of which we will list, as we always do, before we zip on over to the showcase at the end. Um, a bit of background, as viewers to my channel will know, I am a fully paid up Trekkie, uh, particularly regarding the original show and movies. Now, the 79 Star Trek big screen debut tends to be a bit divisive amongst Trekkies, very Marmite. Um, the complaints being it's overly long, it's cold, it's impersonal, it's more about the effects and the models than the story and the characters. And it's trying too hard to be 2001 uh, and not a Star Trek movie. Uh, I felt this way too when I first saw it, uh, but over the years I've grown to, I've grown much fonder of it uh, and, and grown to love it in its own unique way. As the saying goes, we like things for the good qualities, but we love them for the defects and this movie is not without them. But it is worth the price of admission alone. Uh, just for the music, which we all know went on to be used in uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, the TV show, and the stunning reveal sequence uh, of the refitted Enterprise, which still puts a lump in my throat today. Uh, yeah, I'm a big kid. Uh, but that's enough of my Star Trek love affair. On to the box itself, and a very impressive box it is too. Um, viewers to my, regulars to my channel will know that uh, we've reviewed the uh, Mirror of Universe Spock and more recently the um, Admiral Picard from season three of the TV show. Uh, and there's a noticeable difference in the quality of the boxes here. Uh, this box is the same size, uh, it's a magnetically clasped box, but the quality of the card here is, uh, is far superior. The thickness of the box itself, just the overall feel of it is far more premium. It's super thick card. Um, what you've got on the front here is a, a headshot of uh, the figure itself. You've got this beautiful um, Star Trek logo with the motion picture on here, which I believe was used in promotional shots and promotional posters uh, for the film itself back in 79. At the bottom here in this uh, gold foil, you've got one six scale museum grade collectible figure. Uh, Admiral James T. Kirk across the top. We'll bring it round on the right hand side, relatively simple here. You've just got the Starfleet emblem, uh, once again in that gold foil. Uh, around the other side, uh, it just says X06. That gold foil strip is continued. Uh, and around the back here, you've got the usual uh, bits and pieces. There's the warnings, there's the credits and so on. Uh, don't piss this figure off or you might wake up in the middle of the night to find it's eloped with one of your female six scale figures. Um, yeah, on the top you have, let's flip this round, on the top you've got once again in gold foil, uh, not sure if the uh, camera's picking this up, uh, you've got the X06 logo and Star Trek the motion picture and just a picture of the star field on the bottom. Now, as I mentioned, it's magnetically clasped and uh, it does just come off, come off, should I say, as much more um, high end than the X06 boxes that we're seeing today in, in my experience. Not sure why that is. I could speculate, but I won't. Um, yeah, so it's magnetically clasped, uh, opens up. What you've got on the inside here are the usual credits and war uh, credits uh, about the production of the figure. Uh, Nanjin Tam there, uh, the man behind X06. You've got your, uh, uh, your QR code down here uh, if you want to learn more about X06. And it's got this really nice slip cover in front of the figure itself. I'll try and get this into, into shot. It's actually a picture of the, uh, the docking bay uh, from the refitted Enterprise. 
uh, from those opening sequences where uh, Scotty and Kirk uh, are reintroduced to the old, uh, well, the new refitted Enterprise. So, yeah, there you have it. Uh, very, very nice box. It's got a premium feel about it, which I really, really like, which seems to unfortunately have tailed off uh, in the newer figures from X06. But, yeah, that's the box. Very nice it is too. So without further ado, let's dive down onto the table and have a look at all the accessories that come with Admiral Kirk. Okay, so here we are down on the table with all the accessories that come with your Admiral Kirk figure. Not a lot to go out here, so this shouldn't take too long. Quite spartan on the accessories. Uh, but I mean, he, the figure itself is, is lifted from a sequence in the film where really he didn't have that many accessories or anything at all, really. So, uh, it is screen accurate, but Spartan. Uh, but we'll take a look at the hands first. You know, me and my hand thing. Um, there are a pair of, uh, open palm hands already on the figure itself. Uh, and then all you get is this extra pair of fisted hands. So just a couple of pairs of hands in total. We'll take a look at one. Uh, we'll have a look at the open palm hands when we uh, when we bring the figure out. Uh, but I think what we're looking at here is the uh, is the usual high standards from X06. You've got some nice paint applications on there. There is veining. There's bone work there. The skin texturing is nice. There's some redness on the knuckles. You've got uh, uh, fingernails there. Well, what you can see, <laughs> there are creases in the palms. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the usual story here. The usual high standard of uh, uh, of X06 work, as I said. So uh, yeah, and we'll have a look at the uh, the open palm hands when we when we uh, bring the figure out for a closer look. But yeah, um, good start, high quality hands. So we'll put those to one side. You also get the standard issue X06 base. Now, those of you who are new to X06 or new to the channel, uh, just quickly run through how this thing works. It's relatively simple. It's a plastic, all plastic base with this clear top on, uh, uh, as you can see. Underneath there is uh, a piece of plastic, uh, this plastic insert. Uh, to get to that, you simply lift off the clear plastic cover itself, remove the, uh, the, that insert, pop the new one in, and simply clip this uh, section back on. I'll leave it off for the time being because there's some other bits to look at. Uh, the reasoning behind that is you can have him on uh, an individual transporter base, which this piece is supposed to represent, or alternatively, if you have other X06 figures in your collection, you can use this, uh, and then by means of this clip here, you can actually attach it uh, to other X06 bases. It's relatively uh, straightforward to do. You uh, simply align the two bases together, uh, slot this clip in uh, thusly, uh, and you can connect them all up. Uh, and uh, uh, sort of, uh, and, and they provide a platform uh, for, for your X06 figures. So you know, if you're an X06 collector, that's an option as well. So yep, yeah, that's uh, that part of the stand. Um, also comes with a standard issue crotch grabber. We'll uh, we'll reconstruct this because we uh, uh, we need to use this. Uh, for the next accessory that we're going to look at and that simply slots back down on top like that that's my preferred way of displaying it but yeah um, now the crotch grabber itself uh, as I say is standard issue uh, very simple to attach there's a groove in the back there you simply align it with this groove here and he said confidently slot it in place so that's your stand constructed um, yeah uh, and the only other accessory, uh, apart from that plastic clip, are these two plastic clips and this rather nice piece here that we'll take a look at. We'll just move this stand out of the way so we can get this uh, into camera. Now, this isn't a, a brand new figure to me. I've had this in the collection a while. Um, so um, this explains why this is constructed. It doesn't come like this. Uh, what it, it actually comes, and I'll see if I can do this on camera, uh, it actually... What you do get is this part and this rather nice badge. Now, uh, this insignia badge is solid metal. There's some really, really nice gold paint on there. It's got some weight to it. Uh, it is it is very, very nicely done. Uh, it's got a lovely shine to it. it obviously, completely screen accurate uh, and just very, very nicely done. Uh, and what you do, uh, do get in uh, with the accessories as well, is this uh, this foam pad here. And it's simply a case of, there are two spikes on the back of this badge. It's aligning, and I'll see if I can do this on camera now I've taken it off. It's simply a case of aligning the badge and then pressing it firmly uh, into the foam pad itself. 
Um, now, the backing of this foam pad is metal, uh, and it will actually come straight. If you're buying this new, um, uh, unopened, uh, this is actually straight. You do need to bend this, and I would, I would say exercise caution when bending this, uh, this piece of plastic here, but you don't want to snap it. But what you want to do is get a, a slight angle on it like that. And then what you do is take one of these clips, and the X06 have kindly provided two in case one goes, uh, goes walkabout, and you find a suitable slot at the front of the, uh, the base, push the, uh, that clip in, and then you can slot in this badge to be displayed on the base itself. A really, really nice addition. I, uh, I think that's, uh, I really think it makes the figure, it grounds the figure, it places the figure. The fact that it's made out of metal, uh, it just gives it a, a really, really quality premium feel. Uh, and I think it's a fantastic addition there from X06. So props to X06 on that one. I really do like it. And the uh, companion figure, uh, the uh, motion picture Spock, the Colin R. Spock that uh, accompanied uh, the release of this one, or pretty closely after the release of this one, also comes with one of these as well. So uh, displayed together uh, or alone, it does look very, very good indeed. So yeah, props to X06 on that one. So yeah, that's all the accessories. So without further ado, let's uh, bring out the Admiral himself, get him onto this rather nice stand, onto the turntable, and have a close-up look at him. Okay, so here he is, the Admiral himself, onto the stand, onto the turntable. Um, at this point, I would normally uh, give my first impressions. However, as, a, as I mentioned in the previous section, this isn't a new figure to me. Um, I had it in the collection a while. Uh, however, uh, I can give uh, second impressions. Uh, and yeah, I, am, I, I was suitably impressed when I, I first received this figure and I am still suitably impressed now. Um, the proportions are fantastic. The, uh, the outfit is, is really, really good, but we'll get into that. Head sculpt, yeah, um, very good. Um, proportions, great. Costume, great. Color screen, accurate. Outfit, on point. Yeah, uh, I still feel the same way about it now as I did when I first saw it. Um, very, very good indeed. Uh, but we'll uh, stop him from spinning and take a closer look, as we always do. Uh, let's uh, bring this turntable to a halt and see if we can't get him into shot a bit more. Don't want to cut his head off, but uh, we'll see if we can't frame him properly. We'll start, as we always do, at the bottom and work our way up. Um, first thing uh, are these boots. Now, uh, now um, the boots themselves, and I, I d I've never pulled, attempted to pull these, these uh, pants up uh, with good reason. Um, but we'll go into that shortly. Uh, but uh, from sense of touch alone, what you've got is ankle boots here. There's no split cut boot design, relatively simple uh, paint applications here. They're all this olive green, uh, which matches perfectly uh, the, the pants themselves. Now, the, the pants themselves are, a, it's difficult to describe this material. Uh, it's a very, very fine weave. It feels like a man-made fiber. Um, I would say as well from the get-go here, if you are like me and you have a tendency to get uh, burrs and spurs on your fingers and uh, maybe on your fingernails as well, handle this with caution because it's one of those materials that I would imagine uh, will snag very, very easily. It's an incredibly fine weave. But we'll bring him around to have a look at the stitch work. It's very, very straightforward. Uh, the, the stitch work itself uh, is it, just one line up there, an interior, uh, an interior seam, and it's just very, very well done. Um, the outfit he wore in the film was exceptionally, uh, what's the word I need? Uh, smooth, if that makes sense. And that is replicated really, really well here. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, it's a straight leg. Uh, to these uh, to these pants, and it's got this half moon cut out at the bottom uh, where the boots appear, which once again is completely screen accurate. So onwards and upwards. Now the tunic itself, uh, exactly the same material in the in the olive green sections as on the pants. Um, probably fair to mention at this point as well, actually, um, because of the initial prints of Star Trek: The Motion Picture, um, a lot of people assume that this was a grey and white uniform, when in fact it wasn't. Um, and I believe Nanjin Tam actually referred to the original uniforms themselves in, in selecting the colour uh, and the material uh, to, to use here. 
But actually, I mean, nowadays with uh, with Blu-ray, with 4K, with 5K, we, we can actually see uh, this olive green colour. But initially, uh, a lot of the prints that were in circulation uh, and a lot of the transfers uh, for the home market, uh, the quality wasn't as good and this came off as a grey. But this is, uh, as far as I'm aware, this is perfectly screen accurate, this colour. But yeah, that's enough of me rambling on about the colour. Um, but the, the design of the tunic itself has got this, uh, feels more of a cotton than a, um, a man-made fibre in the white section at the front here. You've got the, uh, now I'm not 100% certain what this is and I call myself a Trekkie. I'm assuming this is sort of the vital signs monitoring um, thing, <laughs> which looks like a, a large free-floating belt buckle. Uh, but once again, it's screen accurate. I believe that is plastic. Paint applications are on, on there are really nice. Moving up, uh, let's get him a little bit closer into shot here. Moving further up, you've got the uh, the Starfleet insignia. I believe that is plastic and it feels like it's just glued onto the material itself. Um, that material is continued down the arms. The cut is absolutely spot on. Uh, it really, really is. Uh, the length in the, in, in, the, um, in the sleeves here is absolutely spot on. This gold braiding, uh, the Admiral braiding on the wrists is really, really well done. It looks and feels, um, now it, uh, I expected to feel it, it to feel like a transfer, but it doesn't feel like a transfer. It actually feels more sturdy than that. It feels like um, almost as, a, as if it's plastic uh, that's being uh, glued on to the actual uh, uh, tunic itself. But it, it does feel sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's going to flake or come off. It feels like it's uh, it, it's got some uh, uh, elements of, of hard wearingness, if that's an expression, or am I just making words up? Uh, but yeah, obviously reflected on the other side. The seams on here, uh, the arms, uh, uh, the seams are actually running down the back, and I'll, I'll bring him around here so you can see this, which once again is screen accurate. Um, there's no front-facing uh, seam on this. Uh, they're sort of down the back here, and I believe there's one. And we'll lift this arm up. So, I actually, let's get him off the uh, turntable and get him into camera. This would uh, so we can get a, a proper look at these details. So, yeah, uh, that uh, that free floating belt buckle is really, really nice, as I mentioned. Uh, and I believe it's a vital signs monitor, a location monitor. Uh, colors really, really good. Stitch work, as you can see, excellent. Uh, on the arms and underneath the arms. You've got the uh, lapel insignias on top here, which uh, I'll try and get this into shot, sorry about that. <laughs> this feels like it's a plastic uh, or a pleather on top of um, material that's actually been sewn on. And uh, Looking here, I'm, I am seeing stitch work here. So it's actually been stitched in on both sides. On the collar, you, you can see this really, really fine six scale stitch work. Uh, very, very well done, and once again, very screen accurate. Proportions are absolutely spot on. Uh, yeah, I can't fault the tailoring on this. I really, really can't. It is phenomenal work. Exceptionally screen accurate, really, really well done. Um, and I've got to give uh, props to X06, and you know, without coming off as a fanboy, even though I am, uh, I think uh, viewers to my channel know my feelings on X06 and the work that they're doing at the moment. Um, let's have a look at this head sculpt. Now, um, I wasn't 100% on, on with this head sculpt when I first saw it. Uh, I was a little concerned, but since I've lived with it and since having it in hand, I actually think it's very, very good. Is it 100%? Um, no. There's something slightly off. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Bill Shatner back in 79, um, I'm not 100% sure what age he was, but uh, um, have they captured the likeness 100%? The, uh, the paint applications are really, really good. Uh, those uh, flesh tones and skin tones are really well done. Uh, there are a certain amount of creasing and line work in there, uh, down the sides of the nose. Uh, there's a, a furrows on the forehead uh, and, and where the eyes meet at the bridge of the nose. The eyes are really, really nice and glassy and the right color. Um, the expression they've gone for, I think, is is fantastic. It's just shy of that. Uh, it's almost just before that smirk he gives to uh, Scotty as they see the Enterprise for the first time following the refit. 
which is obviously where this uh, th this outfit uh, is uh, the scene that it's supposed to replicate. Um, I think there was a bit of consternation as well upon this release that they they, they chose this outfit because it really only appears uh, shortly at the beginning of the film and the rest of the film he's sporting mostly a uh, a white t-shirt uh, but I, I really like it I do I think it uh, I, I think it it works uh, and it's nice to see this it would have been uh, probably easier to go down the t-shirt route uh, as far as the tailoring goes but uh, yeah I'm glad they chose this. The head sculpt, as I say, is is very, very good. That hair is very well sculpted. Um, it's absolutely spot on in style. Um, I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, but there are curls in there. Uh, it's not perfectly straight. Um, and, and this is the way his hair was. It had a natural curl in, in, in it at that point. And let's call it what it is. He was wearing a tube. <laughs> he had the toupee on for most of the time. So uh, yeah, uh, but, the, but the colors are right. Um, there's some, I don't know if the camera is getting this in this light, there are some sort of gold, uh, almost blondy touches uh, in there that, that catch the light, which is, which is absolutely screen accurate. It wasn't sort of a, a, a matte uh, brown, so to speak, but yeah, you've got waves in there. Very, very well sculpted. Just, a, a, just an excellent head sculpt overall. It really, really is. Uh, and there's a likeness of Bill Shatner in the 79 movie. I can't fault it. I, 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 perfect, ninety-five percent spot on. Yeah, um, the, there are maybe occasional angles, and I, I think it, it's down to the lighting with this one. Yeah, if you get the lighting right from any angle, it's Shatner. It really is. You get the lighting wrong, and it might look a little off. But I mean, I think that's the case for most head sculpts. So there you have it. I think about. I think that's covered just about everything on this guy. Uh, and I still really, really do like this figure. Uh, the, it was a, a return to my childhood dream uh, with the 79 Star Trek and, and uh, Nanjin Tam and the team over at XO6 have done a phenomenal job of capturing Bill Shatner's likeness. Um, yeah, I think you can see where this is going. <laughs> Final thoughts. Um, great, really, really great. Excellent head sculpt, phenomenal tailoring. Uh, we didn't cover the articulation, but uh, uh, it's not really one of those figures that you're ever going to, I don't think, have in any kind of action pose. Uh, I think the, the, probably the, uh, the, the most dynamic pose it'll ever be is with his arm behind his back. Um, so, yeah, take my word for it. The articulation is good. Uh, I don't think I've ever even bent a leg on this figure. Uh, but yeah, I mean that, yeah, and I can tell because these are really stiff. Yeah, uh, I've literally never ever moved those legs. They've simply been static since it came out of the box. But yeah, the body uh, is good. Um, the articulation I have tried with it has been, uh, uh, has been excellent in the arms. Uh, as before I say, exercise caution handling it. Uh, this material can uh, be a little bit uncooperative, uh, but yeah. The final final verdict on this one is is a massive positive. Let's just get him spinning again. Uh, if we can get this uh, turntable uh, the right way around, um, yeah, great work. And uh, I, I don't think this was their was it their first outing uh, into Star Trek figures. Now, my memory is not not what it used to be. Uh, but as a kickoff point for XO6, they really really knocked it out of the park. So yeah, there you have it. That is uh, XO6's take on um, William Shatner as Admiral James T. Kirk from the 79 movie Star Trek The Motion Picture. And a cracking figure it is too. If you're a fan of Star Trek, uh, if you're a fan of one six scale figures, science fiction, um, I can't recommend this highly enough. Um, it's one of, uh, uh, I think it's a fantastic example of, of what XO6 have, uh, have been uh, have done in uh, the Star Trek IP and what they continue to do. So that's enough of me gushing. I suppose all that remains for me to say is thank you for watching as always. I hope this review has been useful. If you've got this figure, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Please let me know in the comments section below. I'd be fascinated to find out uh, because I know there's some mixed feelings out there on this one. Um, but yeah, if you're thinking of picking it up, I hope this review has been, been helpful for you. I'd give this a solid nine out of ten yeah uh 
possibly a 9.5. I think maybe at certain angles that head sculpt could be just a teensy bit off. Um, or that could just be me, but yeah. Uh, 9, 9.5 on a good day. But yeah, as I say, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. Uh, just before we zip over to the showcase, um, a, a quick word on, on what's coming up on the channel. Well, we are, ooh, in the not too distant future, we are gonna be having a foray into the world of Susu Toys and Watchmen uh, with a number of figures coming in from that line. So watch out for that. Um, just arrived, and I am super excited for this one, is the uh, Sliced Alone Shop Cobra. Um, uh, one that I thought uh, I was gonna miss out on, but managed to land one, so that's in. We have uh, Shifting Scales, We've got the uh, Blitzway and Prime One Studios Paul Atreides uh, from June, still suit edition. That's a quarter scale statue. That's coming in soon. The, I won't continue. There are loads of, uh, uh, loads of, there's loads of new stuff on the horizon. And also we'll be mixing it in with uh, retro reviews, uh, mixing scales up. We'll be looking at 12 scale. We'll be looking at quarter scale, um, nostalgic stuff, grail stuff, really just you name it. We'll be covering it. So uh, yeah, all that remains for me to say is a massive thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Take care of yourselves. Happy collecting. And it's over to the showcase.